Hello, everyone. I'm so glad that you've all joined us on a rainy afternoon in this dry home of the Academy of Music. This is the second year of Phil Notes, an afternoon of storytelling. My name is Phil Corman. I'm the director of CESA, Community Involved in Sustaining Agriculture. Start playing again. And for over 25 years, we've been supporting local farms and hoping to engage more and more people in the community to build something special here that we don't have on the national level, a food system that is equitable, diverse, and sustainable. And we don't do that work alone. Many of our collaborators are here in the room. I'm gonna quickly say them, I may miss some. We have Just Roots, we have Gardening the Community, we have the Springfield Food Policy Council, we have the Franklin County CDC, we have the Food Bank, we have the State Mass Department of Ag Resources, the Commissioner and the Assistant Commissioner, and it goes on and on and on. So during intermission, talk to the person next to you. So today's event would not be possible without the business sponsors that were up there before. But we also put them in your program books. And along with that, I want you to know that every penny of the proceeds from today's event will go to CESA's Local Food for All program. I'll share more about that, and there's more in your booklets. And now it's my true joy to bring up my friend, who every week for over eight years, I get to spend like a half hour, 45 minutes with. He's our favorite radio talk show host in the Valley and the Northeast, Monty Belmonte. Thank you, Phil. And a big round of applause for our banjo player, Max Wareham. I am Monty, and I am lucky enough to talk to farmers every week on my show. Now you're going to hear some stories from these farmers and farm-related businesses here at Field Notes today. They're all true stories. They've been rehearsing them really hard. You'll hear five before intermission, five after intermission. And our friend Max here, sort of like the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, if it starts to go a little bit too long, we'll play a gentle banjo reminder <laughs> that it's time to wrap up the story. It's not punishment. It's just to keep us moving on the track. Now, CESA is the organization that is putting this on today, Community Involved in Sustaining Agriculture, a wonderful organization. They're the local hero folks, and I love talking to our local heroes, and I've gotten to know so many of them. So briefly, I want to talk not about community involved in sustaining agriculture, but the reverse. Agriculture involved in sustaining community. ASK. It doesn't have the same ring to it, sadly. I could tell a million stories, but I'll tell a few stories surrounding one particular farm and how this farm was involved in the naming of my second son, the potential conception of my third son, the marriage of two of my best friends, and is going to help us provide a million meals for our community members in need tomorrow and Tuesday. About a baker's dozen years ago, I was pulling trash out of the river as part of Connecticut River Conservancy's Source to Sea cleanup with a guy named Steve and his son, Enzo. My wife was pregnant at the time, and we thought, Enzo, that's a pretty cool name. My grandfather's name was Crescenzo when he came over from Italy, and they anglicized it at Ellis Island to Christopher. That planted a seed in my head, and when my wife and I had the baby, we named him Enzo. Steve and his son Enzo make a hot sauce. It's sort of black market hot sauce. You can't buy it in stores, but it's very good. It's called Enzo's Hot Sauce. Enzo's Hot Sauce was the inspiration for Kitchen Garden Farm in Sunderland's amazing sriracha. Have you ever had it? You can even see it on Ugly Delicious, the Netflix show with David Chang when they open up the fridge. Kitchen Garden Farm hosts their chili festival at 
Warner Farm in Sunderland, home of Mike's Maze. Anybody been to Mike's Maze? I loved Enzo's hot sauce so much, Kitchen Garden Farm asked me to be a hot sauce judge at their chili fest for many years in a row. So not only did that Enzo's hot sauce name my first son, but when I was at a community event, a staff party for one of our local hero restaurants, Hope and Olive, at Warner Farm, Mike's Maze in Sunderland, and the moon looked so gorgeous, and the drinks were flowing, and the corn looked so erect, <laughs> that my wife, Professor Belmonte, and I went for a moonlight stroll in Mike's Maze in Sunderland. <laughs> it was then we decided to have a third child, who we named Mike's Maze. Because our farm community ties our community together, agriculture involved in supporting community, my friends, when they were looking for a place to get married, had their wedding at Warner Farm in Sunderland, where I was the best man. My friend, the wine squirrel from my wine tasting segments, and the River's own Joan Holiday, who does afternoons on 93.9 The River. It was an honor to be at that wedding in that beautiful place that hit so many places in my life and has brought the community together in so many ways. And even today, and perhaps even now, the woman who is the designer for the maze, which this year was an incredible, I think three football field length of Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin celebrating the 50th anniversary of Woodstock, She's a fantastic artist, and she volunteered to do all of the signs that we will carry for the March for the Food Bank tomorrow and Tuesday in an effort to raise enough money for a million meals through the Food Bank of Western Mass. That is the inimitable Jess Marsh Wishman, whose husband Dave was one of the storytellers last year. So that is just one way that agriculture is involved in sustaining community all through that one farm, Warner Farm in Sunderland, and I could probably tell equally as many stories about many of our other farms in the area too. So remember, agriculture is involved in sustaining community, ask. And ask not what your farmer can do for you, ask what you can do for your farmer. <laughs>